What's up everybody? It's Jamie Kristen coming to you from my home farmstead. I am ready to do my winter sewing unveiling. We had a few failures, but we had so many successes and I had a lot of you guys asking about my setup. So we're going to go over all of it. Now, ironically, let me show you guys this. All of my failures um, were on the very top row. There was one more row above here. All of those were the ones that didn't take. So I'm not sure if, I'm not sure what happened to be honest, but I'm gonna go through all my other um, successes with you guys and also show you my direct winter sewing that is busting at the seams right here. So let's go ahead and open these up. And this is not gonna be a fancy video, you guys. So we are past our last frost. <clears throat> these, um, this whole row right here is all carrots and these are all beets. So let's go ahead and pop the top on all of these. So I would love to hear if you guys tried the winter sewing method this year and how you guys did and had a lot of people asking um, what these little coaches were. These were actually just chip bowls that I carefully drilled holes in the top of and then I got these buckets at, um, a, I, got, I bought them from a local florist. So like I said this video is going to be really quick but I wanted you to see all of the unveiling. So direct winter sowing is awesome for me. I have never had really great germination for carrots, so this is a great germina germination rate for me. And let's go ahead and open this one. And then I'll reuse everything. Oh boy, this one is definitely more than ready to come out. Now, it does have a little bit of sun scold, so I will go ahead and just get those leaves off so that the plant can heal itself. So sun scald is just when it touches, like you can see on this one, it touches the top of the cloche, who is definitely ready to come out, but fickle Michigan weather, we never know when our last frost is, even when it comes, and these ones were golden beets. This whole row, I love beets. I love them pickled, I love them fermented. Super, super happy with this. And this is a little bit challenging to do one handed, so I apologize. But yeah, they're looking great. Lots and lots of moisture in them, so their little mini greenhouse was, whoops, doing its thing. Oops, I just cracked that one. That's okay. Like I said, this video is not going to be very high tech. I am currently injured. I tore two tendons in my foot, so it is ugly and disgusting. So there are all of our carrots. Here are all of our golden beets. Up here. Oh, so awesome. I'm going to turn this around. Again, super sorry about this video quality. I am on the struggle bus doing this myself. These are gorgeous. What variety was this? This was, let's see here. This was the um, Chiaga beet or Chaga beet. And let's go ahead and spin this one around. Open this up. Yeah, we are definitely a beet family for sure. Beautiful. Just a couple leaves that were damaged on this one. Let's go to this side. Ooh, that one popped right off. The moisture had already pulled through that one. Um, this is another golden beet. So something kind of interesting is the golden beet leaves look a little bit more rounded than the chaga beets. So that's pretty cool, the variation in leaf shape. Let's go ahead and move this over, open the last one. This one is another golden beet, and as you can see, it was already popped. Moisture had already come through there. Hey, so I am super thrilled with no transplant winter sowing. I think it did awesome. That was my little setup here. Um, I started opening my 
little jugs here. Um, this is a bachelor's buttons. And then I was like, you know what? I never showed them um, what the results were. So I think I had a hundred and some odd um, jugs in out of that hundred. Ooh, where am I going here? I want to go over here to the failed ones. Out of the hundred that took, I had, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, you know, 90% success rate. I'm super happy with that. So these bachelor buttons are definitely ready to be planted out. Um, I have some rainbow carrots right here that I direct sewed. Those are doing really well. These are my garlic grow bags that I started um, in the fall last year. And oh, you guys, I made a mistake. Look at these, almost all empty, except one, one hung on. Um, I was so excited at our last frost date that I went ahead and popped the top on these pole beans because they were getting super tight and tall, super tight, super tall, uh, getting to the top of those cloches that I had on there while well, then the very next day it snowed. So these babies died. So don't be like me, be an impatient gardener. Um, only one survived and it still has some damage. So we show you the good, bad, ouch, and the ugly. Oh my gosh, you guys, my foot, y'all. You wanna see some grossness? Seriously, here, look at this. Oh, so bad. It hurts so bad. <sighs> but we're getting through it. We're getting through it. It's garden season. We're gonna be happy. We're gonna do stuff. All right, so I'm gonna try and see what is the best way to do things. Maybe I'm gonna prop you up on there and then we'll go ahead and do the opening. What do you think? Like I said, this video is gonna be sloppy, not good editing. We're just gonna go for it. All right, so I'm gonna set y'all there. Probably not a great or flattering angle. It is what it is. Okay, you guys, so here's the first one. I used clear duct tape. I cut three quarters all the way around my containers. And let's open this one up. Ta -da! Ooh, this one's plum shiso. Beautiful. I have three strong plants. I think I planted five in here, so three I'm super happy with. So, yay. I'm gonna go ahead and set these off into the sun. moving down the line here. So I did a, like a variety of different containers. I did half gallons, I did gallons, I did clear water jugs. So let's just see how they all turned out. And if you didn't see my winter sewing videos that I posted, check them out. This one is another bachelor button. So awesome. There's two plants in here. I think I put four in, so super happy with that. I wanted to make sure that I planted for my garden space, not for just the amount that I could grow. So here's another container. One thing that I would definitely do differently is do pull tabs on my, um, well this one's just gonna pop open. Woo! What are you? Where is your little, here it is. Oh, this is mint. Okay, everybody, so we are gonna speed this up. If I did each one in regular time, we would be here for probably 40 plus minutes. So let's go ahead and go through each one of these.
All right, you guys, that's going to undo it. Undo it. That's going to do it for this unveiling of our winter sewing. So here's our jugs that failed. And again, they were the ones on the very top rung of my plant stand. So I'm not exactly sure what was a little bit different there. But here is all of this beautiful, gorgeous little seedlings that did amazing. All without heat mats or artificial light. They were planted in the snow. They went through the winter. They're beautiful. Vegetables and flowers. And these are my directs. A reminder of don't be impatient. Don't take your cloches off, even if it's after your last frost. One lone survivor. And my gorgeous beautifulness over here because I didn't take their cover off. So just really quick, I wanna show you guys my other tomatoes and peppers that I went ahead and started. These are getting ready to be transplanted out. I also have some celery. And then I've got some flowers in my little baby porch greenhouse. So yeah, super excited about the results. I mean, 90% success. Come on now. All right, you guys. I hope you have a wonderful and fabulous day. And from our homestead to yours, remember to sow seeds of love and life and in the garden too. Bye.